Uh, hi all, welcome back to my channel Q Warrior, and here we only discuss the interview questions that is asked in the testing interviews. And if you are new to this channel, so it's very important to subscribe and also press the bell icon to get notification about this channel. And today we are going to see another important topic, and it's very important to watch this video till then. So let's begin. So today's topic is defect module in HPLM. A defect is something that is deviation from the requirement and also the defect is logged during the test execution when the expected result and the actual result doesn't match. When there is difference between the actual and the expected result then it is an issue and which should be reported to the developer and should also be logged into the HPLM and quality center. So defect module in HPLM not only help user to post the defect but also enable them to track and give the overall quality of the release at any stage of the development process. So more the number of defects that you have found in a particular release it shows that the quality of the testing is very good because once you have tested the product thoroughly it is the result of that you have got so many defects and you have locked so many defects into the HPLM for tracking purpose. Also, once you raise the defect in HPLM, it goes through the defect life cycle and once the defect is fixed and tested by QA, it should be closed. Okay. So now you can see the HPLM workflow. It starts from the release specification where we create the release and the cycle. Then it comes to the requirement specification where we create the requirement. Then it comes the test planning. Then test execution. Test planning is the phase where we write the test cases. Test execution where we execute the test case and defect tracking. So I have already created the video on requirement specification, test planning and test execution. And today we are seeing the defect tracking part. Okay. Now let's revise the defect life cycle. I have also created a video on the bug life cycle. I will also post the link for the bug life cycle into the description of this video. So now let's revise bug life cycle once again. So you can see here new status. When a defect is posted, the default status is new. When the defect is accepted by the developer, it is moved to the open status. Means you have assigned the defect to the developer and he has started working on it. Now it comes the rejected. So when the defect is rejected by the developer it is moved to the rejected status it may happen that the defect is a duplicate defect or the defect is not reproducible it is because of some data error so in that case the defect will be rejected again comes the fixed status so when the defect is fixed by the developer it is moved to the fixed status tester would pick up all the defect for testing that are in fixed status okay now, if the testing has failed, the defect is moved to reopen status. Means you have retested the defect, but you are still able to encounter that particular issue. So in that case, the defect is not fixed and you should move the status to reopen. Now, once the defect is fixed and tested by QA and the testing has passed, the defect is moved to the closed status. So it is the final status where the bug life cycle comes to an end. Okay. Now, how we create a defect in HPLM? So first you have to navigate to the defect tab here. So once you will come to the defect tab here, you have to hit the new defect button. Okay. Once you click the new defect button, you will get a new defect dialog box. Okay. Where you have to enter all the mandatory fields like detected by field, detected on date field, severity, priority. Okay. So for severity and priority, this is very important topic and I already have created a video on severity and priority. So severity is the impact on the application or the business and priority is the urgency of fixing that particular defect. So I have created a detailed defect. Uh, detailed uh, video on the severity and priority so please have a look I will give the link of the video in the description users can also enter other information and enter a brief description about the defect 
now let's see the pop up that will come so here it is detected by so in detected by once you will hit the drop down you can select your name from the drop down and again the severity priority you have to fill severity and priority if it is impacting the business so the priority or the severity should be very high and also the priority like urgency of fixing that defect that should also be assigned okay now assign to so if there is a particular developer in your team who works for your particular project so you can assign that defect to that particular developer closing date it should be blank because as you are raising the defect you can't put the closing date to that defect detected in release if you are, uh, you found the defect in a particular release so you have to uh, select the particular release and also select the particular cycle in which the defect was detected estimated time fix it is not required planned closing version not required project you have to select the name of your project for which you found the defect status by default it will be new so let it be target cycle here you have to select the cycle that is related to this particular release where this defect is found actual fix time no need to fill this closed in version not required detected in cycle i uh, told you it is related with the release priority you have to fill reproducible yes subject it's not required target release that is the release that you have selected okay now in the description you have to mention about the issue what exactly the issue you are facing what is the ac actual behavior that you are expecting what is the actual behavior that you are seeing what is the expected behavior also if there is any test data available then you have to mention that particular test data any document that you have referred you have to name that particular document that this is the document you have referred while checking this defect okay or validating that particular scenario now tester can also attach a screenshot or other relevant file associated with the defect using the attachment tab so here you can see attachment tab is there so in the attachment tab we generally attach the evidence so for example when you were exec executing any test case and you take the screenshot of almost all the screens okay so in a particular screen you found the issue so what you will do you will highlight that particular portion where you are seeing that issue save that particular document and attach to the defect so that it will help the developer to understand that in which screen and in which section uh, the issue was found okay so you have to hit the attachment tab then there will be attachment button that will be visible you have to click that and then a select a file from the file explorer dialog box will open where you have to select the file and then click on the open so let's see now here you can see i have hit the attachment link and here you can see the clip button so once you click on the clip button the open dialog box will open from here you have to select your particular file or the screenshot it can be either in the picture format or you can take a word document where you can paste all the pictures and you can attach it once you have selected that file now click on the open button okay now upon clicking the open button you will see that the file is attached here okay and you can see your screenshot here now click on the submit button once you will click on the submit button your attachment is attached and the defect is posted and it will generate a defect id okay now once the defect is posted you can access all the details of that particular defect by hitting on the defect id so you can see for example if you have raised 100 or 200 of defects you can easily find all the defects here if you want to search for a particular defect what you can do you can come here and just either i here and hit the enter button it will filter out all the records and it will show only the defect that you are intended to to see okay
there are also many filters like detected by detected in release priority severity so all those filters are there you can select and find your defect okay now once you have created a defect now you have to link the defect to the requirement because once you will generate the requirement traceability matrix it is very difficult to find for which requirement this defect was raised so for that case what we do we link the defect to a requirement so user can link a defect with other defects or link a defect with the requirement by linking defect and requirement we can generate coverage analysis graph and traceability matrix after creating the defect tester can map the linked requirement against it to do the same you have to click on the defect id once the defect details dialog box will open then you can see here once i hit the defect id this defect dialog box is open now you have to click here on the linked entities okay to link entities click navigate to linked entities click on others for linking requirement against this defect click link button and choose by id then you have to enter the requirement id and then click on the link button so let's see how we can do that now once i have clicked here on the linked entities and then you have to click here on the plus symbol along with the link to link the requirement also you have to select the other tab before hitting the link existing requirement okay first you have to go to the other tab then hit this button then link existing requirement window will open where you have to mention the requirement id so when i'm talking about the requirement id so i have discussed the requirement id and everything about the requirement module in details in the requirement module video i will put the link in the description of this video okay now once you will click on link then you have to click on okay button now after clicking the link button you will see that your linked requirement will be visible here so you can see here that your requirement is failed here and your linked entity name is requirement and the name of the requirement is new customer okay so this is how you can link the defect to a requirement okay now once the requirement is linked against a defect the requirement displays with the link symbol against it as shown below so now you can see here once you have linked the defect you can see this particular icon this specific uh, this specific icon will be visible only for the requirement for which you have a defect and you have linked a defect for a particular requirement okay you can see here there are other requirement also like new account for which this symbol is not visible this symbol will only be visible when you will link a defect to this particular requirement okay now you can link a test in your test plan to a specific defect in the defect grid in quality center also linkage is helpful when new test is created for a existing defect or there is change in the requirement which is linked to a defect so that's all in this video and we will see most interesting and important topics in this upcoming videos so please subscribe to my channel like the video and also comment down on the video if you have any queries i really want you to comment down on my video if you feel any changes that is required if you have any query and thank you for watching